Just let me know when the mics are muted. Yeah, all mics are muted. I can start. Yes, brother. Yeah. So good morning to all of you all. As we today, kind of, this is the last uh, talk on the mystery of suffering, the third one that we are going to reflect upon. And so today, what we are going to reflect upon is number one, a very important question where Paul talks in his letter to the Colos uh, Colossians. Just let me uh, get that verse. Just give me a moment. where we see where Paul is talking about that he shares in the suffering of Christ. So we have to understand what that exactly means, where Paul talks about that he, uh, he's, we, we are called to share in the sufferings of Christ. So in, in the letter to the Colossians, uh, just a moment. Sorry, it's in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 13. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 13, where he tells, where he writes and tells, rejoice in so far as you share in Christ's suffering. So what he's talking about, rejoice in so far as you share in Christ's suffering. We are called to share in the suffering of Christ. So here right now, we are, there is one thing that we have to get a little clarity on because there is a, uh, in fact, there is a lot of confusion that is sometimes happens and we have to look at how the church helps us to understand this aspect of suffering. So we all know Jesus died on the cross and he suffered for our sins. And so what happens is sometimes we think just, just because Jesus died on the cross and he has suffered for all our sins, now... What does that mean? What does that mean? Jesus dying on the cross and he took all our sufferings upon himself. What does that mean? And so for sometimes we feel it means that I must not suffer. Now, this is where we have to understand. Last time I ended with this a very important understanding. If Jesus has redeemed me on the cross and he has redeemed uh, he has redeemed every aspect, everything that I go through, everything that I go through on the cross. Does the, has Jesus redeemed me from suffering? Which means I will have no suffering in my life. Or has Jesus redeemed my suffering? Now, this is a very important point for us to understand. So let's look at the experience of our life. Number one, has Jesus redeemed me from suffering? From suffering, it means now, because Jesus suffered on the cross, I am not going to have any suffering. And from the experience of our life, it becomes very clear that this is not what St. Peter is talking about. That just because Jesus suffered on the cross, now we are not going to have any suffering in our life. The truth is, the church helps us to understand this, that Jesus has redeemed my suffering, which means all that I'm going through has been redeemed on the cross. Now, what, what happens when Jesus has redeemed my suffering? That today, whatever I'm going through, whatever may be happening, whatever pain and difficulty and suffering that I'm going through, since Jesus has redeemed it on the cross, now this suffering can become redemptive. Now this suffering will become beneficial for my own soul and also for the soul of those people for whom I'm, I offer up this suffering. And so the, the first point today, we must get a clarity. Clarity and a deep understanding is the Lord has not redeemed me from suffering, which means I won't have any suffering. The Lord has redeemed my suffering, which means now whatever I'm going through, Jesus has taken it on the cross. And because Jesus has taken it on the cross, now 
that suffering can be redemptive. What does the word redemptive simply mean? It means now it has the power to save. If I, if I go through this suffering and if I'm offering up this suffering, this suffering has the power to save, to save all those people. It, is, it has the power to save my soul and it has the power to save anyone to whom I offer up my suffering. That's what our saints will do. Our saints suffered and they will offer it up. They will offer it up for their own soul and sometimes for the soul of other people. We have classic examples. In fact, if you read the lives of our saints, quite a number of them died. They died when they were, uh, by being very sick. They were very sick when they died. And it is a mystery, you know, how they died so sick when in their lifespan, God used them and God used their prayers to heal so many people that through their prayers, so many people were blessed, so many people were healed, but yet in their own personal life, yet in their own personal life, there was suffering, there was pain. And in fact, uh, some of their death before dying, some of them were very sick. I was just hearing the story of Padre Pio and how right from his young age, he suffered a lot of physical weakness. A lot of physical weakness, but he will never complain. Then, at a very young age, he got the stigmata of the Lord, the wounds of Jesus on his hands and on his body, at a very young age. And those wounds were very painful. So the doctors who will attend to him and try to cure him will often find they were not able to do that. But there was never a word of complaint from uh, St. Padre Pio. He never complained that, though he will go through that. And yet at the same time, the Lord was using him to minister so many people who were coming to him for confession. So many people were getting blessed through the time of the confession. And yet in his own personal life, he suffered. And so this is what we need to get a clarity uh, that Jesus died on the cross. He has not redeemed me from suffering, which means now I won't have any suffering at all, but he has redeemed my suffering. Now, the next important question we look at is the various types of suffering that are used in the scripture, the various types of suffering that are given in the scriptures. And so we're going to have a look at that and then we will have a look at what are the things we must do when we suffer. So what are some of the various things that are given in the scriptures, various types of suffering that are given in the Bible? The first is the punitive suffering. Punitive suffering. What is suffering? Punitive suffering. Punitive suffering is the result of sin. Is the result of sin. St. John Paul writes in his letter, remember I told you all last time, St. John Paul in fact has written a letter, a document, on the aspect of suffering. And so when he writes in this letter, Salvifici Dolores, this is what he says, in the sufferings inflicted by God upon the chosen people, there is included an invitation of his mercy, which corrects us in order to lead to conversion. Punitive suffering happens in our life when we are living a life of sin. Okay, when people are living a life of sin, they are not repenting of their sin and they are not willing to change. God will often use this punitive suffering. And so St. Paul, uh, punitive suffering, which is the result of their sin. Now, it's not that God is punishing them. It is their own sin that is started punishing them now. They have been living that life of sin. And now suddenly, you know, the every sin has a limit. Every sin has a limit. And once, you know, the limit is reached, the suffering starts. The consequences start. The consequences of sin start. And the consequences of sin is kind of a, a pain and suffering that the soul goes through. So Pope John Paul writing there, he says, this kind of suffering God usually allows the person to go. Why? Because God is correcting him. God is not punishing him. God is correcting him in order to lead him to conversion, okay? 
when one suffers he goes on to write when one suffers as the result of punishment means you know that this suffering is a result of my punishment let me give an example here often times i've met people who have been live living life of sin immoral lives unfaithful to their spouses and one day the family comes to know that so and so my husband my wife has been unfaithful to me now once this comes to light suddenly the person who has been unfaithful starts acting as if i am sorry you know please forgive me they will go and make a very good confession but in spite of they going and making a good confession yes god forgives them god forgives them but now that kind of a lifestyle that they were living where they were unfaithful to their spouse that kind of a lifestyle now brings some kind of a pain and suffering and punishment like they have lost the respect of their family their spouse is now no longer able to trust them in fact the spouse is so hurt by uh, when the spouse has come to know that my spouse you know whom i trusted has been unfaithful to me their spouse suddenly start maintaining distance and these people have come to me sometimes and told me we have repented we have asked god to forgive us and god has forgiven us now why we have to go through it we forget you know now here is where i want to bring a very important point sometimes we think if god has forgiven us there has to be no punishment means there has to be no consequences of sin and the dangerous point here is we are repenting we are repenting not because we are sorry for our sins we are repenting to in order to avoid the suffering that will come from our sin i repeat again sometimes we are repenting we are saying sorry not because we are really sorry sometimes we are saying sorry because we know now the you know the sin that i have committed is going to bring suffering in my life let me give an example here another example you know sometimes when our children when we were small and we did something wrong i'm talking about our years i know our youth young you know years when we were small children and we did something wrong and our uh, parents especially our dad will start you know he will either take a belt or a ruler and will start beating us as soon as he will start beating us we will immediately say sorry 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 daddy sorry daddy sorry daddy but why were you are saying sorry for were we really sorry for what we did or now we are saying sorry to avoid to avoid the suffering that is coming from what we did and so i want to make it very clear we need to get an understand even if god forgives me of my sin it doesn't take the consequences away i have to suffer sometimes the consequences and that is the penance i'm i i i have to go through at times where now my family is not able to love me my family is not able to accept me my family is not able to trust me now and this is the suffering that saint john paul is talking about he says this is a puni- this is punitive suffering which means i am suffering because of the sin that i committed the lifestyle of sin that i lived now what should be my attitude when i am going through this suffering this is what saint john paul is talking about he says my attitude should be not be of one enduring and waiting till all feels better but rather we must now look at this you know it's like you know uh, it, uh, when we are going through that suffering take for example we have committed a sin and now our family is not willing to forgive us and we are going through and they are behaving us in such a way that we are now suffering through their behavior because they have been hurt our family has been hurt by our lifestyle and so now they are reacting so saint paul john paul says it's not like sometimes you have to wait till it gets over no as you are suffering that you must he says the one who suffers must focus on rebuilding see the focus has to be on rebuilding the goodness lost due to sin what does he mean to say when i am going through suffering with the suffering which is because of my sin 
and so that suffering my focus has to be build rebuilding the goodness now let me let's look at that what does it mean rebuilding the goodness what is the goodness in this situation in this situation which the examples i gave where the man or the woman was unfaithful in their married life and now they are suffering they are suffering because the the unfaithfulness has come to light the other spouse has realized that my spouse has been having an affair and that has hurt and now the other spouse starts reacting the wife is finding it difficult to accept the husband now get along with the husband and now the husband suffers now or the, sometimes the wife vice versa wife is wife is suffering now those who are suffering because of their sin as they are suffering they should focus on rebuilding the goodness what is the goodness i was unfaithful to my spouse i should have been faithful to my wife i should have been faithful to my husband that at that goodness of faithfulness has to be rebuilt has to be rebuilt when i'm going through that suffering so when i'm suffering for my sin i must ask what goodness did i lose while i was doing this sin okay what goodness did i lose when i committed this sin and i must focus on rebuilding rebuilding that goodness so that is what punitive suffering is called so we suffer sometimes as a result of our sin and when we are suffering as a result of our sin we must focus on when we are going through that suffering on rebuilding the goodness the goodness that was lost due to sin the second is the probative suffering what is probative suffering uh, here the example is of job probative suffering suffering when we are tested it's when we are going through testing what is a test now what is probative suffering here you have done nothing wrong here you have not sin in fact you have been living a very good life we have been living a very good life and we 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 have been staying away from sin we have been committing no sin and the danger here is we think just because i am living a very good life i am very loyal to the lord i am very close to god i am serving god because i am doing all these things i should not go through suffering in spite of that sometimes living a good lifestyle sometimes we may go through suffering that suffering is a test god is using that suffering to test us what is the test the test is because are we following god are we being loyal to god am i loyal to god am i following god just because everything is going well in my life i want to repeat again am i following god am i being close to god just because everything is going on well in my life will i still remain close to god will i still follow god when things are not going well that's the test and here we find the example of job where satan in job chapter 1 is telling god you know job is worshiping you job is where following you god why because you have kept a hedge around him hedge what is hedge is telling god god you know you have kept your protective hedge around him you are protecting him just take away all the blessings you have given him all the wealth you have given him just take it away he will curse you to your face so your satan is bringing a very valid question why is job following god and then we find all the sufferings that job has to go through satan is given permission to take away everything that belongs to job but his permission is been yet limited he can't take job's life but everything that job has and we know what job's response was when he lost everything he says god gave it to me and god took it away may his name be praised job was yet loyal to the lord in the time of testing and so some of us suffering we have been doing very good you know we have we we have been living righteous life we have not committed any sin and we are going through that suffering that may be a test it may be a test what is the test am i following god just because things are going well in my life 
will i follow god and will i be loyal to the lord even when things go wrong that is called probative suffering the third kind of suffering that the scripture talks about is disciplinary suffering disciplinary suffering disciplinary suffering is like punitive suffering what was punitive suffering i am suffering for my sin pope john paul writes disciplinary suffering it has an educational value the sufferings inflicted by especially we have the example the sufferings that the people of israel people of israel went through after being delivered from the egypt they were going through the desert and the suffering that they went through at that time and god was allowing them to suffer because this people of israel were not loyal to god god had delivered them from egypt and as they were going through the desert when they never got water when they never got food they will complain against moses they will complain against the lord and then the lord will find you know they will something wrong will happen to them and that was will happen basically because the lord was trying to discipline them discipline them not punish them but discipline them the psalmist is writing in psalm 78 verse 34 and 35 says when he slew them okay when he slew them means what does it mean when he slew them when god punished them when god disciplined them they sought for him look at this when god punished them then they started seeking for god they repented and sought him earnestly they remembered that god was their rock the most high god was their redeemer they remembered this people remembered god otherwise they will forget god whenever they were getting whatever they wanted they will forget god and that's why when god disciplined them they remembered god the discipline the discipline comes why does in hebrews chapter 12 we have those verses uh, verse 4 to verse 11 hebrews chapter 12 verses 4 to 11 where it says god disciplines us and when god is disciplining us he goes the writer to the hebrew says he is treating us like children whenever we are disciplined by god we it's a sign god is treating us like son and then he tells us that when we go through that discipline that discipline should help us to become holy he goes on to write and while that discipline is pain, painful in the end it bears fruit of the fruit is peaceful and righteousness so that discipline is to make us holy now these are the types of suffering that the scripture talks about punitive suffering punitive suffering is a result of sin probative suffering probative suffering we have done no sin but it's a test and remember sometimes we will be tested why a faith a faith that is not tested cannot be trusted the faith that is not tested that faith cannot be trusted if anyone is saying i am have i have faith in god i have i have strong faith in god and that person doesn't has not gone through any suffering in their life which means their faith is not tested now you can't trust their faith only a faith that is tested can be trusted that you can trust ah this brother this sister has gone through all this suffering yes yes we can believe that you know and yet he has been very loyal to god now today in conclusion we conclude by looking at the last part of this teaching what are the things i should do when i suffer very important what are the things i must do when i suffer and so i want you to pay a very close attention because this is a very important question now the year i want to bring the first point you know once again i want to bring it whenever we are sick whenever things are going wrong in our life okay this i have taken it from say the letter of saint paul to the corinthians chapter 12 was 7 onwards what is happening in 2 corinthians chapter 12 was 7 onwards the apostle paul is experiencing a suffering the suffering is called thorn in the flesh 
The suffering is called thorn in the flesh. And when he's facing that thorn in the flesh, we do not know what that thorn was, but it was something very painful. It was something that Satan will often use to upset Paul. And so Paul says, look at what he did. For the first thing he did was, he says, three times I prayed to God. Three times he prayed to God to take it away. So that's the first thing you and I should do whenever we are suffering, whenever we are sick, whenever we are going through a problem. The first thing is, please pray to God to heal you. Please pray to God to take you out of that problem, to deliver you, to bring you out of the problem. Never accept the problem bluntly. Just because we are hearing a talk on suffering, don't ever say that, you know, I should not pray like this. You know, I should not pray for my healing. Uh, I should not pray for my deliverance. I should, I should be going, oh, this is the cross I should be going. Nay, first we must pray for healing. In fact, we must tell the other brothers and sisters also, to pray for us, to pray for us that we are healed, to pray for us that we come out of the problem. Now, when I am praying, when others are praying, and I am still not getting healed, now that's where the talk comes into practice. When I have praying, I've been praying so much, and others have also been praying for me. And the temptation here now is we start feeling we are not getting healed, the problem is not getting over, and the temptation for us is to think, oh, why God is not listening to my prayer? God is, you know, healing other people. And, you know, there are other people who are getting out of the problem. And why God is, you know, so unjust, not doing it to me? No, no, no. Maybe the Lord wants me to go through this suffering. That's the time we do a very important thing. We accept the suffering. We accept the suffering as a part of God's mysterious will for our life. Mysterious will. Can't understand why God is keeping this. I can't understand why God is allowing this. Some time back, some years back, I came across a person uh, who was who was used by the Lord in the ministry of healing. And the Lord will use this person. Uh, the person was a preacher, and also when the person prayed, there were other people who got healed. Now. Uh, just some years ago, just I think so it was uh, one year before the pandemic, this incident happened that a person discovered that this person has developed the uh, colon cancer. You know, the cancer is in the stomach. And how this person started praying for healing, that God healed me. And not only the person was praying, so many of us were praying for the healing of this person. I myself remember going once after the prayer meeting to this person's house to pray over the person to be healed. And that time this person started talking to me, God has to heal me. I'm serving God. God has to heal me. And because I, I there is a lot of work I have to still do for God. Now that is right. There is a lot of work I'm, I'm serving God is right. I'm I'm there is a lot of work I still want to do God for God. That is also good. But you and I can't say that this may be the time that God says it is time up for you. And now you have to come to me. You see, one one of our problems that we'll always face, and this I want you to I want to share this with you because here is where our real spiritual strength test comes that how strong we are spiritually remember there will come a phase in our life where the end will start where the end will start now we don't know when that end will start how that end will start and when that happens when we know you know it and some of us some of us may fall sick at that time may even get bedridden Remember the saints also, many of them before dying, they became so sick and they were sick for a long period of time. Long period of time they were sick. And so when, when the time comes for us to go away from this earth, but we are so attached, 
we are so attached to the earth sometimes we are not attached to the earth we sometimes are wrongly attached to the service of god we are so attached to serving god that we are afraid to be with god and that's a problem that's a problem a very subtle trap very subtle trap oh i still want to serve god i want you to pray that god heals me why because i i have to still serve him there is a lot of work i have to do yes there is a lot of work and remember it is god's work god knows how to do it god's workers those who serve god they come and go by you dying by me dying the work of god is not going to stop the spirit of god is not limited to you and to me we have to understand that none of us are indispensable i know that tomorrow if i go away from the earth it's not that the work of god is going to stop it will still continue because it is god's work and god's workers come and go god's work continues and so sometimes this is a temptation we have been trapped ourselves in that we we have got so attached in serving to god that now we are not willing to go to god and we are getting disturbed and that's what started happening in the life of this person the person started getting very disturbed what is god doing why i am not getting healed and all of us suddenly realize in all the others we were praying myself you know especially i realize that now this person the lord wants you know the lord is calling this person this is like the final days of this person the lord is calling this person to be with him and the person is not willing afraid of dying i'll tell you our greatest problem in life will be the fear of death we all want to go to heaven but not now not now not immediately you know sometimes we sing songs also to god which are so hypocritical we really don't mean it songs like i just want to be in your presence i just want to be where you are i just want to be where you are we say dwelling daily in your presence i want to i i just want to be lord where you are i just want to dwell in your presence what is the song means god i want to be in your presence daily and just imagine god takes this word seriously and tells us yeah really tonight you are coming you are dying today immediately all of us will stop singing the song and will say oh god i never meant that i never meant yes yes but don't take it so seriously god i never meant that i have to come to heaven i meant you know here on earth you know i just want to be in your presence here where is the presence of god here it's only in faith we live in the presence of god now god is actually calling us to be in that real presence and we are afraid suffering will always torment you i want to say this suffering will torment you more if you are afraid to die and one of the person the real people who should not be afraid to die are catholics are christians if they they are the only people they should not be afraid to die why dying means being with the lord whether we live we live for the lord whether we die we die for the lord and so suffering is really because what is happening why why we are getting so disturbed what is the maximum thing what is the maximum thing what is the worst thing that can happen to you and me in suffering what is the worst thing the worst thing is you and i will die nothing can happen beyond that that's the worst thing i often tell myself you know when i'm going through a problem what is the worst thing victor that will happen to you in this problem and i said maximum i'll die and i thank god god has set me free from the fear of death it was almost 25 26 years ago when i was delivered from that fear of death the writer to the hebrews i do not know there is a verse in hebrews where the writer says you know through the fear of death through the fear of death satan was holding the children of god in bondage i'll give it this verse to you all next week 
through the fear of death satan was holding the children of god in bondage how they were in bondage through the fear of death and so today i want to ask you you know a very important question yes you must pray for your healing you must pray that you get well but what if the lord chooses the other thing are you afraid to die and if we are afraid i think so you know now it's it's a time this is the best time we are in the lenten season where we are going to celebrate the passion of our lord to ask the lord you know lord i want to be freed from the fear of death i'll tell you the day the lord mark my words the day you are free from the fear of death no problem will trouble you no problem will trouble you you will be peaceful yet with pain pain will be there in your heart but you will be peaceful even in the most difficult problem why because you are not afraid to die and why you are not afraid to die because the lord has opened your eyes and now you know dying means being with the lord and i believe you know when i saw this person going through this test and the person the person died the person died this person whom the lord was using died being sick but the way the person died i felt that was not how a christian dies afraid to die and that can be true we are serving the lord we claim we claim as we are people who are very close to god a real test will be when the lord calls us to be with him whether we are willing to be with him or whether we still say no 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 there is and sometimes we can give spiritual reasons huh? no 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 there is a lot of ministry i have to yet do so many souls are dying yes so many souls are dying i know but god is more concerned about that and that doesn't mean you are going to be in this world forever and i am going to be in this world forever there will come a time in our life where god says pack your bag time up and i'll tell you many of us are going to brothers and sisters let's have a look at this point this is the main point why your suffering will really torment you fear of death now once we have conquered that it's, it's let's look at uh, when we suffer what are the five things we must do the first thing we must do when we suffer is entrust yourself to god entrust yourself to god remember when jesus was dying on the cross one of the words he said from the cross was into your hands i commend my spirit o lord jesus entrusted himself completely in the hands of his father and so when you and i are suffering and we are praying for god to heal us we are praying for god to deliver us for god to take away this problem and the problem is not going away the problem is not going away we are not getting healed that time we start getting troubled why i'm not getting healed why i'm not getting better why this problem is not getting over we start getting troubled over it and when we get troubled remember we try to find a safe place the safest place on earth let us remember at that time the safest place on earth is the hands of our heavenly father let's in complete trust in complete trust place ourselves in the hands of the father now here also many of us play a game we say father i am surrendering myself to you so that you can make me well no 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 surrendering means father i surrender myself to you i don't understand why you are not healing me i don't understand why this problem is not getting over but i entrust myself into your hands i place my life into your hands i surrender my life into your hands whatever you want to happen let it happen let your will be done 
that's what real surrender means let your will be done not that i'm surrendering god now you take this problem away and sometimes our surrender is also playing games with god the word surrender means now to whom i have surrendering whatever that person wants should happen not that what i want should happen where you say surrender i am surrendering my some many a times i we say lord i am surrendering myself i am surrendering my problem let my will be done what is my will i want to get well i want this problem to get over surrender while surrendering we believe god knows what is best for me god knows what is best for me and so whatever he wants let it happen and so the first thing we surrender ourselves into the hands of the lord the best thing to do in that time is go and sit in the blessed sacrament and pray something like this jesus i am choosing to entrust myself to you in the midst of this suffering and when you are praying this the other prayer goes like this i refuse to blame others now i refuse i don't want to blame anyone for this problem or i refuse to run away or self medicate or become bitter lord after surrendering i refuse to blame others i refuse to run away from my suffering i am accepting it or i refuse to become bitter and some of us become bitter you know god is not healing me god is not answering my prayer i refuse to become bitter i will entrust myself to you and i will allow you to work in me however you want and whatever you want that is what it means to entrust please jesus bring about the results you desire this is something we should pray for when we are going through suffering so the first thing we do is entrust yourself to god and today you know whatever you are going through yes you are praying for god to take it away you are praying for god to heal it and if it is not happening god wants you to entrust yourself into his hands second unite your will unite your will with the will of christ through prayer unite your will to the will of christ through prayer what does it mean jesus is our role model here remember in the garden of gethsemane matthew chapter 26 verses 36 to 39 in the garden of gethsemane when jesus was praying what is the first thing he said father if it is possible take this cup of suffering away ah so jesus also prayed you know father you know if possible take it away take it away i don't want it take it away and that's why i said the first thing we should pray is lord heal me lord take away this problem even jesus prayed but then he said not my will ah remember that not my will but thine be done yeah and so many a times when we are suffering it's like god my will be done what i want should happen that's why suffering is a test also how much we are surrendered to the lord whether we really trust him that god knows the best god really knows the best and sometimes if god tells me this suffering is going to lead to death my faith is so strong that i i accept even that 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 is the best thing if it is best for god it is best for my soul but no 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 i still i want to go to heaven but not now not now not so soon not so soon not now and so the second thing we have to do is we have to unite our will to the will of christ in prayer father take this cup of suffering away but let not my will but let thy will be done praying for the will of god and this once again it doesn't mean we should feel this huh? remember on the feeling level what jesus was feeling feeling level jesus was feeling feeling what he was feeling take this cup away i don't want to go through this anyone will feel i don't want to go through this 
so on the feeling level jesus was struggling it was saying i i don't want to go through this but then he decided now please say it's a very important decision he decided not to live by his feelings he decided to live by his will he was uniting his will though his feelings were saying i don't want to go through this he was uniting his will to the will of the father so we go by our will the third thing we do the first thing what we do entrust yourself to god second thing what we do unite my will to the will of christ the third thing that we do when we suffer is realize that jesus will not allow me jesus will never allow me to go through something that i cannot handle jesus will not allow me to go through something that i can that i cannot handle what does this mean let me give you the scripture verse for this which means whatever god is allowing me to go through according to god i can handle this i am strong enough to go through this so god has that faith in me that i can i can go through this i can bear this up so god will not give me and sometimes some of us say you know i can't bear this no actually you can bear but what has happened is you have made yourself you you have got such a touchy nature and i have such a touchy nature that a little discomfort i start complaining a little pain i will start complaining i can't even bear sometimes a little pain according to god whatever i am going through he says you can handle that the scripture verses 2 corinthians chapter 12 2 corinthians 12 verses 7 to 10 where paul is praying for the thorn in the flesh we saw that and is telling god to take it away what does god tell him he says three times i prayed for god to take it away then the lord said to me what did the lord said to me yeah paul i am healing you i am taking it away no the lord said to me my grace is sufficient what what paul, what what the the lord is telling paul is i am not taking the thorn away the lord is telling paul is i am not taking your burden away i am making your back strong amen i am making your back strong i am not taking the burden the burden will be there on your back i am making the back strong and sometimes some of us we don't even know we don't we have to understand this that whatever i am going through god won't allow me to go through anything i can't handle and so whatever you may be going through you have to also say to yourself i can handle this according to god i can bear this up i can go through this I, uh, yes it is painful yes it is painful yes is bringing a lot of feelings of discomfort within me but that doesn't mean since it's paining and since it's bringing a lot of discomfort that i cannot go through it sometimes the pain the pain in the suffering the pain of the suffering makes us feel that i can't take it we can take it according to god god won't allow us to go through anything we can't handle we can handle his grace is sufficient the fourth thing we can do the fourth thing we have to do when we go through suffering and this is one of the best thing we can do go for confession make a good confession now why we want to make a good confession i know sometimes you know this has been preached i am very careful when i am giving retreats that i don't preach something like this you know often times we pray we start you know those of us who are in the preaching ministry we can make this mistake and where we tell preachers where where i am not saying what we are saying is wrong but that is not what we should actually say because it it builds up wrong hopes in the life of people their focus on you goes wrong we start saying like that you know god is not blessing you god is not healing you because there is a block there is a block of sin in your life and if you repent if you take that block away god will bless you god will heal you now what are we doing there wrong what is the wrong thing we are doing we are inciting people that they should repent 
the repentance is not coming back to god the focus is not on conversion the focus is not on coming back to god real conversion the focus is oh i want to be healed and the only way to heal is you know make one make a good confession so actually the i'm i'm actually the person ends up going for confession in order to be healed not in order to come to god completely and that is what the catechism calls it it's a wrong sorrow it's a wrong sorrow i'm saying sorry i'm repenting not because i want to really come back to god i am repenting because i want to get my problem solved and look at the selfishness in that i i i am repenting because i want to you know i i want to get healed and that's why those of us are preaching have to be a bit careful when we are saying things like that we have to just speak the word of god where god says god is calling us to repent we have to just speak on that rather than you know putting this bait it's like you are putting a bait to the person you are baiting him up to repent and they are repenting but maybe they are hard in their hearts they have really not come to god they are doing it to be healed they are doing it to be delivered from that problem i am not saying that god doesn't heal us after confession yes i have seen a number of people in our retreats after confession i remember one lady having a 14 years you know back pain and when she came for the retreat she was tilted a slight tilted bent in front and when she went you know that was a time when she was did her confession and she never even realized she was healed that her back had become straight she never i have seen this the signs and wonders happening but i am careful as i give that because i am the one who does that session on the second day of the retreat on preparing people for confession i am careful i do not say that you know if you if you if you go for confession god will heal you no 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 that's a bait then the person's mind is diverted then they think oh the only way to solve my problem the only way to get healed is confess and that's where the little selfishness is there real conversion means i am sorry that i have heard the heart of god that's a real sorrow now my first thing i want is i want to come back to god the first thing i want to do is i want to put my relationship with god right and then i will allow god to put things right in my life but i am not even thinking of i am not even thinking of getting healed because i have realized the greatest problem in my life is not my sickness the greatest problem in my life is my sin i am far away from god that is the greatest problem not even my sickness and the first thing i shall do is come back to god and so one of the best things we can do when we are going through suffering is make a good confession why we make a good confession not to not for that suffering to get over not to for us to get healed we might get healed the problem may get over praise god for that praise god for that but we go for confession so that we remove all the blocks from our life in order for the grace and the power of god to do his work in our life whatever is that work is whatever and sometimes that work will not be healing that work will be strengthening of the soul that's what confession does it removes all the blocks so that the grace and the power of god is able to flow through us the last thing now please pay attention this is very important the fifth thing the last one what do i do with my suffering for us who are catholics here this is the thing you must do with your suffering what is the fifth point participate on the altar what do this verse means participate on the altar when you go for mass during the offertory time offer up your suffering during the offertory time now please listen to me very carefully those of us who go for mass and after the offertory time the priest prays one prayer you know he is offering the bread and wine on the altar consecrating the bread and wine after the prayer of you know before the prayer of consecration he is offering you know he is making the father is now you know getting the bread and wine ready and we are singing a song offertory called the offertory 
immediately after the offertory, what is the first prayer? The priest, we all stand and the priest says, pray brethren that your sacrifice and mine be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And then we say, may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the church. Look at the prayer we make. So what, first of all, look at the prayer the priest makes. We sometimes say it like a parrot and we have not understood what he says. What, the, what is the priest saying? Pray, brethren, that your sacrifice, huh? he's telling me my sacrifice, I, what in the world I am offering there? He first says your sacrifice and then he says mine and mine. Be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. So what is the church telling us at that time? What is God telling us at that time? During the time of offertory, offer up your sufferings. Join it with the sufferings of Christ. It's like a sacrifice you are offering on the altar. And that's what we are called to do. That's where our suffering becomes redemptive. And how many of us we suffer, but we don't offer it on the altar. We don't offer it up. So pray, brethren, that your sacrifice and mine be accepted. Offer it up. And as we offer up this suffering on the altar, once the priest prays this prayer, pray, brethren, that your sacrifice and mine be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Be acceptable to God. He says, may the Lord accept the, your sacrifice. Okay? For the glory of his name, for our good. Uh, now God is going to use this sacrifice, this suffering that I've offered. For what? For my good and the good of all the church. My suffering will now become redemptive. Where God is going to use that suffering for the good of my soul. For our good. And the God is going to use my suffering to save the souls in his church. Don't waste your suffering. Don't waste what you are going through. Offer it up on the Lord. Offer it up on the altar. And every time you go for mass. Now there are sometimes some of us are not sick. But our daily life is suffering. If you are living your vocational life. I said it in the first talk. You are living out your vocational life. Your, what is our vocation? What is your vocation? What is my vocation? Family life. And now, you know, the man who's working, especially if you are in Bombay, you know, traveling from the place where you are staying to go to that place where you are working. Just last Sunday, I was giving a mission in one parish, which is further away from the place I'm staying, one hour far away from where I'm staying. Which means my, my place is one hour from the main city of Bombay. Main city of Bombay. And this place is one hour far away from my place. Which means now from this place, those who are going to work to Bombay, they have to travel nearly one and a half hour one side. Maybe two hours one side. Four hours. You know, two hours to go, two hours to come back home. Four hours just go in traveling. And they're traveling. The trains are so packed. I know. I when I got on the in the train, I'd I was doing this mission on Sunday in this parish, and it went on very well. Thank you for your prayers. Had a youth Lenten retreat also on Friday. That also went on very well. Got very feedback, good feedback from the youth on the sessions I did with them. Got a very good feedback even from this parish. With the mission, the talk, I didn't know. But when I was going to this place, I suddenly realized, you know, the train was so packed. And I realized the hardships that these people are going through. The hardships that these people go, to, go through to go from this place to their workplace. It's a suffering. And for whom they are working? Family. Then when they go to their office, the work itself is stressful. That's another suffering. And then sometimes you have to hear from your boss another suffering. Then the woman who is working, who is a housewife, that work, you know, the housework is another suffering. The woman's work never ends. Man, at least his duty is ended. He comes back home. At least he has a Sunday off. But the woman doesn't have a off on Sunday also. Sunday also she's working. 
and then every day now when this session gets over many of you will start with the housework and i'll tell you that's not easy your work the woman especially the all the sisters here your work just doesn't end till night you don't fall on your bed it's you are just doing work and work and work it just it just doesn't end and that is a kind of suffering you're going through for whom you're going through your family you love your family and that's why you're doing it for your family <coughs> now the point is when you go for mass and sometimes you feel like complaining you even feel like blaming you know the family doesn't care for you you know no one is there to help you no one is there to support you no one helps you to finish the work you're doing it all alone if you don't blame anyone for your suffering if you don't complain and please do that please do that say i'm going to i'm going to offer this suffering on the altar today when i go for mass and so i don't want to complain my offering shall be good and even if i'm feeling like complaining i will offer this complaints also on the altar but i will not open my mouth and complain and if you go and offer up all this that you are going through for your family life and that's what we are called to offer it up if you offer it up on the altar that suffering has a power to bring good in your soul and it also has the power to save other souls amen our suffering is powerful let's not waste it i like to end up with a story uh, in 2010 i had gone to divine retreat center to preach to do a program it was a family retreat you know there are there, there are two times in a year they have a family retreat in the last in the christmas week and in the summer vacations and this was the first time i was invited to the divine retreat center kota to preach for both there was the youth youth retreat going on you know the people come as a family so the youth have a different retreat and the couples have a different retreat so i was doing one session for the youth one session for the couple up and down you know just going at that time on the first day one incident happened when i was traveling i was traveling by flight from bombay to kochi and one incident happened with me you know the air india flight which i was going by i was traveling by the air india airlines this airline forgot my bag in bombay only you know when you travel you give your bag you take your ticket and then you go and sit in the plane and i realized when i got down from the plane you know i had worn very ordinary clothes i realized that my bag was forgotten back in bombay and they told me i i had reached kochi very early in the morning 4 o'clock in the morning i had reached there and they told me now you have to come in the night 10 o'clock to get your bag back because that's when the other flight will come and your bag will come at that time i just never knew what to do there was a driver who had come from the divine retreat center to pick me up so I, in whatever shirt and pant i was very simple clothes i was i just got in the car and went with him and when i went there i was uh, uh, as soon as i went there it a early morning session people were getting ready to start the session starts there at 6 o'clock and so i met went and met father agustin valurun during the breakfast time i remember i met him because they they gave him the news you know the preacher who has come from bombay his bag is forgotten and uh, no clothes are there even his notes are not there my notes you know the notes that i had prepared to give the talk over also in the bag and the first day i have to preach now sometimes you get in a tight spot you have prepared well you have prepared all the talks and but the file is there your notes are all in the bag only thankfully that time the holy spirit had led me to put all my notes on my email so during the breakfast time i met father agustin valurun and was he was he was trying to console me he was trying to tell me you know victor you don't worry about the clothes we'll give you a good shirt and pant but the problem was you know the other preachers their pants were a little more i am a i am a gym fitness fellow and my my what i can say my kamar my back is a little slim not i mean say very slim and the other fellows perhaps we all eat rice and all and we a pouch and all grows so the pant size is also more 
so i happened to put one pant which fit me little but half the time i remember on that day while preaching i was also holding my pant from behind <laughs> it would so that it doesn't fall it was really a comical sin see now there was an incident that happened when i was talking to father agustin valurun at that time and he was trying to console me you know you you don't worry tonight you can go and get it we will send you by car again you can go and get your bag but in the meantime we don't worry we'll provide for you at that time there was one lady who came to him with a bent back you know she had come with a bent back she came to father and she is telling father you know uh, i have come for this retreat and i'm come here bent father on the last day i want to go back straight she is telling father and i'm hearing that and father smiled at her and says yeah 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 whatever the lord was father never said yes amen you will get well you will go back straight he never said that i i respect him for that that he never said that sometimes you know we we say that and we say we say it in faith no 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 you don't know what god wants in the life of this person and so father said very nicely yes it's the will of god look at the line if it's the will of god you'll surely go there you know this will happen if it's the will of god it will happen so the whole retreat got over on the last day when i was leaving i was again talking to father thanking him for all the help he gave me especially when my bag was not there and i saw the same lady coming up now there was a feeling of discomfort i had but father and why when she was coming back to meet us the last day when every all are going up where the prayer for healing has happened infilling has happened and this lady's back is still bent and with that bent back she comes to father i am feeling a little discomfort because on the first day i knew this lady had told father i want to go back well and now still she has a bent back and she is telling father this and i was surprised what she said she said father yesterday god healed me <laughs> and father is smiling at her and i am wondering you know how how god how god healed you your bent back is still bent he says yesterday father during the time of healing god revealed to me that my suffering of a bent back is for a purpose and if i offer up this suffering for my son who is a drug addict that if i offer up this suffering don't complain don't blame anyone but if i offer up this suffering for my son who is a drug addict god will save his soul so father i'm going to offer up this suffering i'm happy that i have this suffering of a bent back and i'm going to offer it up for my son wow father just laid his hands on her and blessed her and sent away but i who i was standing with father and i i learned a lesson this lady in the retreat was healed and the healing was more powerful than physical healing what was that spiritual healing where right now in her soul the same problem for which she was complaining and blaming god she has decided to accept that suffering now not only accept it but offer it up for her son let's offer up our sufferings every time you go on the altar let's not waste brothers and sisters it has power to do good to your soul to good do, to good pray brother in that your sacrifice and mine be acceptable to god and we pray may the lord accept your sacrifice of your hands for the glory of his name for our good and the good of all this church may god use this teaching to help you to suffer well let's bow our heads and pray lord we praise you and we thank you for this last three weeks the sessions that we have heard on suffering truly lord your ways are mysterious this morning lord we ask you for the grace yes lord we we should pray when we are suffering we should pray for healing we should pray that we should come out of the problem but lord give us the grace to trust you especially to trust you that you know better that you know the best 
may this trust be in our hearts which was in your son jesus father that in the garden of gethsemane he said take this cup of suffering away but let not my will but thy will be done give us the grace to know that you know the best you know better give us the grace to entrust ourselves to you to place ourselves into your hands and above all give us the grace and wisdom to offer up all that we are going through every time we go for mass lord use this talk in our life in my life to teach me to suffer well in jesus name we pray amen 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 yeah. thank you brother welcome any questions i'm willing to answer just for another 10 minutes or something oh uh, brother i didn't get the names of the four types of suffering you said punitive suffering forget uh, probative you suffering Uh, punitive suffering, probative suffering, and disciplinary suffering. So, oh, punitive suffering, punitive three suffering, three of them, three. Okay, okay. Yeah. Punitive is suffering for our sin. Yeah, yeah. Sin. No, I know. Yeah, I only I, I thought there were four, so I thought maybe I, I was yeah. just checking on that. Yeah, three. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> and I'll just out.